gentlemen, let's read Gaming Silicon video. Let us discuss the Xbox One's ES RAM. As according to the developers behind Popcorn FX, they would, of course, be known as Persistent Studios. Now, in case you're not too familiar with Popcorn FX, it's a middleware technology. In other words, it plugs into existing game engines and is focused upon real-time particles, in other words, 3D real-time particles. Uh, so this would be like asset workflow, debugging, the creation, management, that type of thing. And it's utilized in multiple games right now, including uh, for the PC, PS4, Xbox One, as well as the previous generation as well. And I'm sure many of you would be aware of the concerns that have been surrounding the Xbox One's ES RAM. Um, it's a very limited amount of memory, 32 megabytes, but has a very high amount of memory bandwidth available to it, over 200 gigabytes per second. Now, Camille, um, who was being interviewed, Camille uh, Myrie, uh, she said, and I quote, that the small memory isn't problematic, it only means you can use 32 megabytes at a time, but you can map slash unmap virtual memory at will on those very fast 32 megabytes. Indeed, she also pointed out that the fact that the memory is so fast, you can actually, and I quote, and this is actually used for render targets blending intensive operations, so it will be indirectly help particle effects by making overdraw be faster. But uh, we decide to use that memory, but as a middleware developer, these are decisions we cannot make on our own. The game studio might have other plans for those 32 megabytes that we're not aware of. So for the moment, we'll definitely do some research and testing with ESRAM when we have popcorn effects running on the GPU to see what we can do with it. But it's not really a big priority right now. So, uh, end quote and all. So, what are my thoughts and opinions on this? Because I have heavily discussed Xbox One's ESRAM. Well, I think the developers will make better use of it as um, the system becomes more, well, developed. In other words, once it, the actual eco structure of the system is more familiar. And obviously, we've got the API tools are being developed by Microsoft. You've also, of course, got DirectX 12, which is on the horizon. Um, there is a lot of debate regarding whether there's actually going to be a large improvement in terms of performance with the Xbox Ones um, and uh, DirectX 12. But regardless, in my personal opinion, um, obviously the problem is Camille is referring to it as regards to middleware, not necessarily game performance. And there's no doubt about it, there is a lack of performance on the Xbox One compared to the PS4 hardware, um, just simply because of not only the ES RAM, but also the GPU. You cannot forget the GPU deficit. It's roughly 50%. Um, it just in terms of raw compute units and everything else, that's, that's just unfortunately the route that Microsoft went um, so there you have it but I think the, the system isn't doom and gloom and I, I, I do feel that people go kind of over the top when they refer to the Xbox One I mean some people would make it sound like it's barely more powerful than Xbox 360 which of course is ludicrous it's looking to be a very capable system I I have to confess, I'm very curious if the recent rumours concerning Nintendo actually releasing a console. Oh, not releasing, I'm sorry, that was completely wrong worded. Uh, announcing a console at E3 are to be believed. Because if they are, and the specifications of the DDR4, not DDR3 or GDDR5, but DDR4 are true, it'll be very interesting to see how they deal with the bandwidth deficit the DDR4 would leave them, because apparently they're using a GPU, at least according to the rumours, that's considerably more powerful than the PS4 or Xbox One. Now, obviously, those are rumoured specs, and if that's true, they'll also most likely have an area of fast memory on there as well, because I don't really see DDR4, unless they've got a ludicrously powerful bus, um, 
powerful. Shouldn't that be uh, not powerful isn't exactly the right word, but ludicrously wide bus. DDR4 is most likely not going to do the trick. Also, interestingly enough, apparently they've only got four gigs on that, which is very strange. Regardless, in concern with the Xbox One, hopefully Microsoft's development system is going to improve. As they said, they cannot create render targets, which is basically the frame rate buffer, um, or should I say the frame size buffer. So obviously, they can't decide, you know, the levels of anti-aliasing, they can't decide what internal resolution the game's being rendered on, and so on and so forth. All of this does, at the end of the day, need to come down to the developers of the game. So, yeah, the Xbox One can utilize this for the ESRAM, but at the end of the day, the developers most likely will have other important things that they need to utilize this for. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the relatively brief video. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye for now.